time, picks and pans for game number one. GE Tigers versus SK Telecom here in the Champion Spring Grand Finals. Uh, no surprise to see the Lulu band. Uh, it's a top pick generally for GE and a mid pick for SKT. Yep. And they've actually, in three of their last five wins, including one against GE, they've had a mid Lulu. So it's been very important for them when they're victorious. They put that emphasis on Bang, and they run high mobility comps with Bang on Civil Revolution. Well, Bang's a real huge story in this team in the latter half of the season, too. Finally stepping up and really being able to be more than just that solid carry. He is the carry who can carry. You know, they don't need to just rely on Faker every game now. So Ziggs will be banned against Easy Hood. We haven't seen him play it, but of course, back on the SKTS days, everyone knows. It's a strong pick right now, too, with yeah. the uh, change to themes. It's been uh, getting to be a pretty big pick. Yeah. Interestingly, LeBlanc banned, of course, Easy Hood doesn't play that champion, and Kuro does. He's 6-0 and this season on LeBlanc so far. That is a bit surprising, isn't it? And there's the Rek'Sai, so it will not oh, be a first right. pick Rek'Sai. Well, it's going to really test Lee, you know. I mean, SK Telecom wants to see what he's got. There's that first pick Urgot. It was left open. Are we going to see the Nar in here from SK Telecom, maybe? The Nar in? Well, Nar is a bit of a high priority in this matchup, but Marin is the worst Nar player of the two. Generally yeah, speaking, when we talk about the styles of these two teams, SK Telecom likes to skirmish, likes to play for these early Dragons, and uh, to snowball the game that way. They do very well with early gold leaf snowballing it. GE, on the other hand, definitely the better team at playing from behind. Uh, they tend to, they tend to close gold gaps even if they are at a deficit and they play more for the 5v5 moments the big 5v5 fights and they're very good at playing around nars rage bar in that way yeah. and then they take that baron that's why they have more barons per game uh, than we see from skt now marin is currently 13 and 1 in his career on maokai maokai is easily his best champion right now and switching over to that is probably pretty wise they may give tom sejuani right now not opting to take that nunu but either way it's going to be strong they're going to switch it up to Sivir and Sejuani instead at the very end. I mean, Bang has played Sivir quite a bit. It's been a priority for both teams. Yeah, and we could see the Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia has fallen through the bands. It was banned in all of the games between CJ and SK Telecom. Well, Kuro's good on it, but I think at the very least, you have to keep it away from Easy Hood. His Cassiopeia has been absolutely terrifying. Interestingly, both Faker and Easy Hood Whoa. have been playing a lot of Azir and solo queue, and so is hey. Kuro. But all three of the mid laners in this match have been spamming a ton of Azir in solo queue, so that doesn't surprise me. Well, they might break my rule right away. Zareth, a possible pick here for SK Telecom. It's not quite as bad here, though. Ah, but Doha, they're not blind picking Zareth. Oh, that's true. They're not <laughs> blind picking him, but still, I get nervous, you know? It's a champion that makes me nervous when I see it now. Still, Easy Hoon is one of the strongest Zareths in this region. Certainly, I would oh, no, say no. much better than Faker. It has been a specialty of his, but I'm very skeptical in this tanky meta. I just don't see Zareth as as that much of an effective choice. Well, exactly. If you're not going to be blowing up Azir, you know, who else really is going to be the target on uh, GE? And it's go. it is going to be switched over to Cassipi. I think that's a much better choice. And will it be that Nar from Marin? Wait for it. He's got 10 seconds to decide. I think the reason why they didn't pick that Maokai was they're afraid of a Maokai counter matchup uh, if GE were to pick the NAR. But Makes now sense. they have the NAR, so what is the solution from GE? I don't know, do you think it's Aurelia? It's interesting to see Hecarim fall so far down the Dixon bands. No Smite top laners banned this game. Yeah, whoa. Aurelia's locked, actually. Interesting. It really is locked. Will Bard be locked, though? We've seen it in other regions. Gorilla for weeks he told me he hated that champion, but there's been a lot of changes. Bard is pretty good right now, just very difficult to use. Gorilla also told us that he likes Bard on 5.7. He's changed his mind big time in 5.7, that's for sure. Early on, every week I was like, can play Bard? Bard? Nope. And he's not going to play it now either. There's the switch over to Nautilus. I really hope we get to see Bard today, though. Nautilus is, is a pretty interesting pickup. I, he, uh, Gorilla did have some very interesting level 2 invades in lane swaps on that Nautilus. They've, right. GE has run strategies like giving Gorilla full XP from the Gromp and then just had him abuse the enemy jungler. Well, it's worked really well in the past and a Thresh pickup for Wolf wouldn't be too surprising here. It would fit right in with the composition. Yeah, they have some good pick potential that way. A lot of CC for the engage, really a huge amount of hard crowd control coming out of SK Telecom's composition and really good engage potential. So 
Easy going to be running the Ignite on Cassiopeia. May have a hard time not getting poked out of lane by the Sazir early on. That might be a bit of a challenge, but if there's anything Easy Hoon has shown us he can do, it's playing patient and farming up in the late <laughs> game. I don't think he's too worried about the matchup. I don't think he is either. So Lee going for the Nunu this time. See how well he can counter jungle against the rookie jungler Tom in this matchup. Well, he had to make some changes. We'll see if the Nunu is uh, what it's going to take. There's a shot of our lovely crowd as we go through our final matchup graphics and Smeb on Aurelia. A bit of a surprise, but I'm this really is a curious surprise to see how we can do. Uh, this is a surprise pick, but they have two good uh, sources to blood boil now, or actually three. They have Urgot, Aurelia, and we have the Azir. So great composition in terms of using that blood boil. But usually with Azir, you want to get, or with Aurelia rather, you want to get that snowball going early, and you just don't have as much of a ganking presence with Nunu in the jungle onto that top lane yeah. against Mar and Snar. I'm just glad it's not support. Support Aurelia, yeah. yeah. Me too. In the mid lane, Corona Azir, Easy Hoon on Cassiopeia, Prey on Urgot, Bang on Sivir, kind of the two most preeminent AD carry champions right now. Until Bang pulls out his trade into Shin again, and Gorilla playing Nautilus. Wolf on Thresh, and there you have it. The game is loading up, guys. We've come so far this season, and it all ends tonight. SK Telecom versus GE Tigers, game number one. Let's see you, Tigers. It's time to get in the game. Everybody runs, but Prey is just waiting for everyone else to get there. <laughs> we can teleport. GE Tigers versus SK Telecom, game one. Welcome to the grand finals, guys. Glad to have you with us. Here from beautiful Seoul, South Korea. It's been a while since we've done a finals. We were on the beach in Busan last time. It's, well, it's, yeah, it's been over six months, actually. Yeah. Too long, though. Too Way long. too long, man. Well, a bit of a fan here at level one. A couple mid wards going down. Interesting. I'm wondering, I'm very curious about this Aurelia pick. There must be some sort of uh, set plan in mind on how to use this because she does have to get that advantage. If you talk about these late game team fights, you really are going to want to pick somebody off with Aurelia prior to getting in there because she will fall behind Nar and not yeah. be all too useful. It's a pretty high risk pick. I mean, that's why we don't see it a whole lot. But again, you know, I mean, we knew we were going to see some surprises from GE. It's been a long time since we've seen them play in a match like this, and uh, you know they had to have something planned. All right, so we are going to see pretty standard starts right here. Looks like I'm wondering if we are going to see the Krugs get handed over for the XP in the bottom lane. Bang and Wolf just walking into lane right now. We will have the 1v1 in the top smep. Going for that flask, so anticipating some harassment up against Marin. Marin. That makes sense. I mean, you've got a ranged champion versus a melee champion. Yeah, and it looks like okay. a bit of an ex interesting, bit of an experience share right there yeah. with the Nunu. And then they will head quickly into the lane while Nunu goes over to the red buff. Meanwhile, Tom starting at his crux, going to his red. And then see if he puts out some pressure after that. Right? Yep. Prey and Gorilla will have some harassment potential in this lane early. Uh, Gorilla's Nautilus has been very good. There's a play, a little bit of trading early on. Of course, Gorilla starting with that E. Not gonna be hooking in anytime soon. I really am curious about this top lane, though. You know, how well is this really going to be? There's a level two right on the Wolf immediately, trying to trade as best they can. They get a good amount of damage onto it. Not a bad start for the GE Tigers. It's a minor win. All things considered. Well, those minor wins add up to the big win. What's interesting too is Kuro played Azir. Of course, SKT and Kuro, or SKT and GE played in their last matches of the regular season. Kuro played Azir in both of those games and lost them both. So they're really going back to this, thinking that that wasn't the primary issue in those matches. Hmm. Easy Hoon did not play in those games. So it is at least a very different player to deal with the mid lane matchup. Pushing forward is GE, yeah. and so the Scuttle Crab will be taken there. 
You know, like we mentioned too, a big question in this matchup is, is Tom going to control the Dragon as well as he did the last time these two teams faced each other? Champion picks a bit different this time around, but Tom did such a good job, but the pressure is certainly on now. And speaking of pressure, here comes a bit in the top lane. Marin popping out, gets hit with that snowball, gets slowed down a bit. Lee, Smeb, they're gonna keep going. Marin forces the flash, flash snowball! It's gonna be first blood going to the GE Tigers. Marin. Not too upset by that one. It, you know, does happen once in a while. He knows he was pushed too far up. And Marin had a war trinket in his inventory that yep. he could have used in that situation. Felt that he could get away from that gank with this flash and his hop, but it didn't work out. He didn't have the crab there. Tom wasn't backing him up. Marin with a risky, risky push forward in that lane gets punished for it. Oh, I mean, we kind of saw him shaking his head in the booth there. He knew he made a, a pretty... And a silly mistake there, and they paid for it. But good timing by Lee. They had it. Is. it was not the easiest gank to get right there, but they did actually manage to pull it off. Yeah, it does burn Marin's teleport early on, too, so a TP advantage for the GE Tigers if they want to try to pressure uh, Dragon as, uh, as well, I suppose, in the next few minutes. Yeah, they really need this TP. You'll notice that Smeb is holding on to it right now. You have to use this advantage in Snowball. You need to right. get Aurelia around the map, skirmishing and winning these little, little fights early so that you can actually use her effectively in the late game. Oh, they're gonna spot Lee coming in with that Warden try brush. So Wolf and Bang should be pretty safe here. Tom close by anyway. Farming wise, it's pretty even in the bot lane. Uh, in terms of farm actually, uh, Prey usually has it at more CS at 10 and at 20 by about 10 compared to Bang. So, Prey, so far so good for SKT then. Yeah, so uh, Prey, Coming out with a little bit of a lead right now, but that's to be expected just in terms of historical statistics. And the other thing to consider about Aurelia here is that if she gets ahead, there's no one who can split push against her. Now, SKT has de decent wave clear, but she's still going to put down a lot of pressure on those turrets. Kuro's going to be a big threat in terms of sieging as well, so GE has a very solid 4-1 split push in this game, and SKT, they need to group, they need to get those team fights, but they also have to scale. So it's gonna be a while before Cassiopeia and Nar really rank up in terms of power and in terms of tankiness in the top lane in order for them to make some plays. So SKT going with a very different strategy than the one we saw them play against CJ, where they were really kind of all inning on the mid game this time around, looking. Oh boy, Bang, moving up in lane, Craig Rill and Lee all waiting for him. Oh Bang, you may be in trouble, he's got his flash, he does not have level six yet, there's a heal, there's a lantern, he gets out just in time. Close call, they're gonna go in with the anchor anyway. Yeah, cute little trick right there, but Tom was waiting in the river just in case anything went down. They yep. were wise to the shenanigans. Let's try, but not really much. Marin using that range advantage to get some hits onto the turret right there, has got about a third of the HP in terms of chip damage onto it so far, so. Yep. He's actually doing pretty well, also up in levels. Well, he gave up that first bit. blood, but yeah, he's been able to farm a little bit, stay up in CS, and if GE's not able to really get anything out of this teleport advantage, then the first blood really doesn't end up needing a whole lot. At least the first blood, if you're a GE fan, went over to the Aurelia. Yeah. That's really where you need it to go. Yep. Well, like you said, it's all about getting that Aurelia going as quick as possible. Easy Hoon will be going the tier into Abyssal Scepter build on Cassiopeia. Pretty much the most common one that we see. And then Koro has the Chalice. We'll see if he goes Stinger afterwards. Sometimes we have seen Korean players not build the Stinger if there is a Nunu on the team and go for more AP, go straight into Death Cap afterwards and just rely on Blood Boil for the attack speed. So there's a little bit more flexibility in that case. Marin. Oh, Marin a bit low already. Lee coming in to try to make a play there. Doesn't end up getting a kill, but they do force Marin, you know, more or less back to turret for now. So we have not a whole lot of mana to actually finish that one up. No. Which I'm sure Marin is not too unhappy about. Lee maxing Snowball first, it would appear. Two points in that one already, so he's really committing to these ganks, actually, on Nunu. Bit of an odd, not the most common Nunu build that you see, but with the Chilling Smite, he be able to potentially get some ganks down the lane. Tom going to Arctic Assault his way through and Death Cap second item incoming. Here we go. Can Tom save his red buff? Doesn't look like it. Lee is going to take it. And he gets away with a bit of counter jungling there. Actually, Kuro maybe in a little bit of trouble. Take a ton of Easy and Easy and coming in. There's a snowball onto him. And he's got to be careful. There's the ult. Can he get back to the lantern? He can. A flash from Lee has to be used. 
So Trey, you know, for a summoner, not bad for SKT. Yeah, they were a little bit afraid of Tom potentially joining that party there, but Tom just clearing out his red buff, and that's uh, one less tool that Lee has to gank these lanes. It's not really the most fearsome thing in the world if someone's like, Tom's here. You're like, <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Tom, I haven't seen you in a while. It's not like... I don't know, like Mephisto has arrived. You know, that's that's a bit scarier. These Korean players really need to choose more intimidating names. It's I all know, about right? mind gaming your opponents, though. Like Bonesaw. <laughs> I've heard he's always ready. Bonesaw the jungler. Yep. Makes sense to me. Kuro continuing to push the slain back as hard as he can. Easy Yundo staying up in CS, no problem. I like Prey. It's almost like yeah. that's what you have to do to beat him. Right. It's, it's intimidating in a way. Gorilla. I don't know, I go back to like that SC2 player's name was Hope Torture. <laughs> I was like, wow, it doesn't get any more bleak than that, does it? That's dark. But Bang is a little bit intimidating. Prey actually is going for the Brutalizer here first. Usually we see our AD carrier got players complete a Burra bottom, All and right, here's some action. Box. Oh, he doesn't catch him with the box. Can they catch him with the offerings of Lonnie Knock White? Turning it around, here comes the teleport as well. Canceled, though. Marin has to cancel that TP. The opportunity just didn't work. Yeah, nice turnaround there from GE. Marin wanted to abuse the fact that Speb had just teleported into the top lane to get some farm. So there was no chance of any kind of response right there. But right. there really wasn't that opportunity. Like you said, Gorilla was able to use his ult. And so they got out of the situation. And Prey still has his ult up, so if they dove that turret, it could have been very, very bad. Well, I mean, Wolf missed people at the box, too. He didn't catch anyone with it. If that had happened, I think we would have seen the Arctic Assault, or we would have seen the ult, rather, used by Tom. But he didn't use it. It's a good read, though. Marin will still have another opportunity to get his teleport up just a little bit faster here. Yeah. And that means that they don't have to all in on something that probably isn't going to work when they can just give themselves another chance, thanks to the cancel. You know. And so blue buff gonna be handed over to Kuro and he'll get back in lane just in time to take out this minion wave. Pretty starting to get a nice CS lead down in bot lane. He's been able to use that tankiness to really put the herd on to Bang and Wolf. Uh, Sivir, of course, getting hit by those corrosive charges can oh, yeah. be quite problematic, but he's been doing a good job of holding his spell shield. And that's one of the issues with this lane is if you use the spell shield on the corrosive charge, all of a sudden you open yourself up to some serious Nautilus CC, so Pretty much just fleet footwork that gets you out of that situation. Pretty much. Tom waiting. Looks like he wants to try to make a play. Again, the box is not up, but they still do have Sejuani out there coming in. And, oh, it doesn't quite bring Gorilla back. Oh, they got him with the death sentence, though. But Wolf taking a bit of damage on his own. And that was another attempt that didn't quite work out. Meanwhile, Snap stunned under turret. Meanwhile, action in the mid lane. Easy Hume, though. Slithering his way out of that one. Yeah, Easy Hoon with all this MR that he has right now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Alt on the Gorilla and Prey. They catch him. There's a play. Prey a bit low himself. He's not going to make it out. A kill for SK Telecom. That one goes to Bang, and that's exactly where they want it. Now, do you think this opens up a dragon for them? Well, Potentially. They, they have the pressure in the top side, and it's not really a great way to defend right now. Marin and no Sveb are going at it in the top side, but. Well, Tom making plays, not doing bad so far. Uh, sticking around, knowing where his best option was yep. in that situation. So, Bang is caught right up in CS as well, too. And holding that ult really paid off for him, Yeah, actually. Well, it was really smart play. I mean, he saw the box didn't connect when they tried it a little bit earlier, decided not to use it, and they come back and get a kill on the prey with it this time around. Now, it looks like just based on the TP timers that actually Smeb canceled his TP earlier as well. Uh, okay. So that's what happened up in the top side. Sorry about that. I looked at the timer afterwards. But I forgive you, Bonnie. It's okay. Oh, all to get some walls. Smeb getting beaten up a bit by Marin. Smeb with flash available. No real worries there. Marin doesn't hit him with the stun. Does get him with the slow. Either way, just doing tons of damage to this turret. In the meantime, is he going to walk up? Or boomerang again? Ooh, not quite. Uh, this Aurelia with the first blood just hasn't been able to convert. Can't clear the waves fast enough. Constantly harassed by the ranged auto attacks coming out of Maren. And you know, if that tower falls down, that's pretty much the value of that first blood just evaporates. And then you're stuck with an Aurelia on your team. Yep. Can't do a whole lot. I'm not entirely sure that GE 
as the best pick for this situation. Frey's gonna dodge a skill shot right there. And GE, they're still waiting on Frey. He's gotta get that Muramana before he's going to be really useful. And SK Telecom, not going for that Dragon quite yet, but. Are they lurking in try? Thinking about coming in here. And we'll see if Thrill and Frey can draw them in. I don't think that Bang and Wolf are gonna be taken in by this right now. It doesn't look that way. Now, if we look at the CS difference between the junglers also, 33 to 50, Lee has spent a lot of time ganking with this new new. And yeah. it's only resulted in one single assist. Meanwhile, Tom's just been farming up and he waited until level six to really make a solid attempt at a gank. And it turned out to be successful as well, so. Well, Tom's got his enchant as well, and Lee uh, still lacking his. So it's made a big difference. Good vision around Dragon, though, for the GE Tigers right now. Not an opportunity. This yeah. turret's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Barnes a little bit scared, though. He has no rage, oh so he has boy. to be careful right here. Yeah, there's a sub from Equilibrium Spike. Smeb might have an opportunity here. No ult available, though. If he had had his ult, I think Smeb uh, might have been able to go all in on that one. Smeb looking a little bit frustrated right there in the yep. game. Can't really do much up against this NAR pick. Well, the Aurelia pick, we talked about it being a bit of a risk, and it certainly seems to be that so far. Just gonna have to find some really good plays in order to turn this around. Actually, Marin just chased him out of the dry brush where he's trying to oh, break wow. off. Flash is used and uh, gets, oh, got hit with the building. One more might do it. Marin picks it up, throws it. Oh, the shield from the turret manages to save Smeb, but it is not gonna save his turret. But Meanwhile, some action down by the dragon. It delayed his recall substantially right there. Yep. And that really, really hurts. Well, it's gonna be a decent amount of damage on that top turret as well, if not uh, a dead turret for SK Telecom. Now, there's nothing you could do either to take this dragon right now, really. Scuttle Crab goes over to SKT. You're still dealing with a 4v4 on the bottom side. Man, if GE loses to SK Telecom with Tom and Izuun in, I think it's gonna be a little bit dicey from here on out. We'll see, I'm sure they have some more strategies prepared. Of course, but just the, the morale, you know? I mean, it's gonna take a hit when you lose to your other, your opponent's kind of like sub roster, right? Yeah, you would think, I would think. If it were me, I'd be kind of disappointed. <laughs> a little bit of damage on the bank. I'd love to see how the mid lane turrets are doing right now because Kuro has had a little bit of a pressure advantage for most of this game and that could really come into play here. Looks like I have a 50% down on Easy Hoon's tower so far. If they can open up the middle of the map, that would be fantastic for this Aurelia. They're gonna try. No luck so far though. SKT, they may have a, an opportunity for Dragon fairly soon here. At the very least, Smeb hasn't fallen behind in yeah. terms of CS, even though he did lose a couple of waves to tower right there. So the gold total between the two top laners. Yeah, he's got his Trinity Force anyway. Yeah, pretty even. He's, Aurelia really hits her stride at around two items, where that Trinity Force is crucial, but if you can get that Frozen Heart as well, you'll be feeling pretty good. And against all this crowd control too, her passive may be able to do some work, but she has to dive back and kill someone, most likely Easy Hoon, if she can right. make it into the back line. Well, that's gonna be tricky with Cassiopeia's ultimate coming at you. It certainly is. Not to mention the CC from Thresh, Sejuani getting knocked away by Nar potentially. It's gonna be hard for Aurelia to find a, a place in these team fights. Lee coming down to mid lane, Easy Hoon's just gonna pick up some Raptors it looks like. No big raptor there, however. Nope. Not Only really one little raptor remaining. Not really taken away. Let's see if what Prey buys when he goes back. Could finish up that Monabune right now. And Home Guard's already on Marin, actually. Okay. He's really looking for the big TP play. We get his Narbar up there, and uh, now. Here we go. It's time. Dragon started by SK Telecom again. TP up for both teams. Lee's going to throw Ward over the wall and spot this. There's no way they can contest this. I think they do have to let it go, yep. And they will. So SK Telecom claims that first Dragon after a lot of positioning all game long. They grab Drill with the Death Sentence. They force a flash as well. Oh, man. So getting the Summoner, getting the Dragon. Really nice situation for SKT. Certainly good for them. But this is how we expected this game to play out. SKT, the team that does concentrate on those early dragons, 
GE the team that plays a little bit from behind and comes back through hitting item power spikes and forcing team fights at advantageous timing. Yep. Uh, GE's shot calling is certainly excellent. We've seen it this entire season. But it is. Oh, Lee might be in bit of trouble. Has to burn his flash. Not really a reason for him to be there either. No. I guess trying to get that Rift Scuttler, but... Dragon was already done. You don't have to take the objective on the map at that particular timing, particularly when you're all alone like that. And look at what this leads to. A lot of vision in the enemy jungle yeah, for SK it's pretty, Telecom. It's a pretty big mistake right there. It's much Lee. more than just burning the flash. All that vision is really devastating for GE. You know, force him back like that. There's pretty much no question. Marin is going to find a pink ward in the brush, eliminate that while he wants to farm up with the Scuttle Crab, but... I'm skeptical that GE can really come back with this composition. We've got two mid laners that both scale very well. Right. And Urgot just not going to be doing a lot of damage in the late game. The team is tanky, but not as tanky as it could be. No. Alongside. They, it's still very vulnerable. They could have a Hecarim here, too. Remember, yeah. that pick just fell all the way through the draft, kind of inexplicably. Shivana also not coming in its match. Shivana, a pick that was banned by SK Telecom against Shy after he played it in the first game and won. Well, his teleport smite Shivan up in top lane is pretty terrifying. It absolutely is, but yeah. definitely something you look at, the, at afterwards and say, well, SKT really isn't comfortable on this pick. It looks that way. They're going to ban it out, so why not put the fear into them in a lane that might have gone just a little bit better. True enough. Well, he'll just keep farming up his own jungle while he can. But again, you know, look at that CS. Tom has just been spending so much time actually farming up, getting those items, making a difference. He's still pretty far ahead. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely massive right now. Yeah. Getting a couple of frozen hearts as well. You know, it's, it's just kind of more of the same as far as the trouble that GE has had in the second half of the season. You know, Lee just does not look comfortable post patch 5.5. And here we go, Saber all activated. They're gonna go in. Wolf pops the box on over the wall there. Teleporter coming down. Lee uses his ultimate to slow on Bang. This may be trouble. Bang gets away on the lantern. Kills coming in for SKT, a double for Tom. Meanwhile, they finally take down Bang. And it looks like Smed may be in a little bit of trouble as well. Marin trying to force him to stick around. There's the flash. Wolf's can he land the death sentence? Oh, he barely misses it. SKT though, they're gonna be happy going one for three. And Easy Hoon during that burned his flash to zone out Kuro and chunk him out so that he couldn't join that fight. So what we saw right there is the power of that Sejuani coming in with the Arctic Assault over the wall, now going to take the red buff as well. Right. And the skirmish power and the movements being really there. And also Marin just a little bit faster on that teleport than Smet. Smet came in too late. Uh, home guards help with that as well. And SK Telecom continuing to just dominate the lower jungle of GE Tigers. I'm sure we're gonna get a All replay of that, that in just a second. But oh yeah. The Kuro poking Easy Hoon a little bit more right now. Well, I feel like GE really thought they caught SK Telecom, but they were the ones getting caught there. Easy Hoon getting poked, but again, I mean, look at this guy. He's been poked and pressured all game long. Still no deaths. Hardly any pressure. He's up in CS. Easy Hoon is just like Captain Safety, man. I mean, you need like someone to make a safety video for your factory or something. <laughs> just like call up Easy Hoon, man. No one's ever been hurt in his workplace. He needs like a sign on his turret that says something like 365 days without a successful <laughs> gank in my lane. <laughs> And taking some damage onto that turret, not a lot you can do to avoid it, but again, you know, I mean, he's farming, he's doing his job. And that Frozen Heart finished for Tom right now, too, is going to make it even more difficult for Smeb to actually get damage down in some of these fights. Of course, Aurelia is just so attack speed dependent, and it helps, too, against a champion uh, like Azir, so. Yeah, very true. It's very interesting that you could buy an armor item like Frozen Heart and have it deal with an AP mid laner like that, but it is something that you can accomplish with a Frozen Heart. So it's that item in this case is doing an incredible amount of work on SK Telecom. Yeah. And man, the nervousness that we saw from Tom in his previous match just is not there today. He is playing spectacularly. Again, 
This kid, despite a couple tiny missteps, is probably one of the most impressive new players I think we've ever seen come up in Korea. Yeah, he, his debut was very strong. And again, his performance in the last match was, was pretty bad. You know, there's no way to sugarcoat it. It was very disappointing. But this time around, he's putting down the pressure again. And one thing that's very interesting about Tom's style of play is that once he makes a decision, he will continue to batter at it until it works. When we see him that he wants to take a dragon or he wants to gank a lane, he will sit there for a long time. <laughs> he will try True. two, three, four times in a row to try and get it. And it's that's not very common among junglers, but it is interesting about Tom. Tom also prefers to play on the bottom side of the map and leave Marin relatively alone. Well, I mean, you certainly can do that. Marin, aside from that first blood, usually uh, pretty safe. Well, it's interesting, too, because GE is the sort of opposite jungling style. Lee loves to gank for Smed. Yeah. In fact, when Lee has nothing better to do, or if he doesn't know what to do, he often will just go and gank top lane, whether it's a good idea or not. In fact, that's been a problem in some of GE's losses. Yeah, we've seen a lot of it. Uh-oh, SKT Good hiding out river. Dragon there. Snap here. Are we going to see a fight? Here comes SK Telecom. No rage for Nar right now. Yep. Or it might not be quite as useful. And they're just going to start dragging. Can GE stop this? Gorilla, think about coming in. There's a flank. Lee Kuro getting ready. There's the help. They're going to turn on to Gorilla. He's on his own. They're going to force him away. Dragon gets taken by SKT. Tom Man will smite it. Now the fight happens. Wolf goes deep. Bang on the other side. Very safe right now. Frey still high health. Trying to get back in. What a huge Naro from Marin SKT. Cleans up this fight easily. It is going to be a near ace. Only Gorilla might escape. Smeb still in trouble here if they can hit him with a building. Oh, manages to hop over to the Rift Scuttler. He'll make it out too. Yeah, Trinity Force at Aurelia, probably not going to catch that one with an R. <laughs> probably not. Uh, and in that fight, too, it looked like Tom didn't even use his smite, but still actually secured that dragon. Uh, Lee oh, yeah, was in right. the pit. Oh, they are going for Baron right now, too. Yeah, very early Baron, but you can absolutely do it right See, now if you're SK Telecom. It was all part of the plan. It's, he saves his smite because he knows they're going to do Baron. Look at that. They all get it. Of course, I'm kidding, but they get Baron. And SKT really poised to take this game one in style. Really did look like it was smoke, but it was not. It didn't go on cooldown. Yeah, it looks like Tom didn't spike that at all, actually. Very yeah. weird Baron right there. Um, and we see just a huge setup from Baron's Gnarl. Absolutely the right place. Managed to get his rage in the proper position. Yeah, Wolf and Marin did a great job of blocking things up. Bang was never in any little iota of danger during that team fight. Yeah, immensely for SKT right now, given their composition and the fact that this game is sliding inevitably into more 5v5 team fights. Yeah. I don't really see how GE can come back. You don't. Uh, Aurelia can't split push right now. There's, there's really not much more for GE to do. They decided to go with a very interesting strategy that carried some risk to it, and SKT kind of outplayed them in the laning phase. Well, when the late game scaling team is uh, about 6,000 gold ahead of you at 26 minutes, you yes. know things have gone off the rails in a big way. So, SKT. Man, a win here just does so much. Yep, Smev and Marin fighting Marin over it. the grub, and Marin managed to pick that one up. Well, they managed to get their own red buff, so they've got that going for them, but now the pressure on the mid lane is going to start. We're only one turret into this game, but I think with this Baron, these turrets are going to start falling it's really fast. It's absolutely crazy, Doa, that only one turret has fallen in this game. Yeah. Everything has revolved around bottom lane teleports and dragon fights so far. And SK Telecom able to pick up a Baron before even the outer ring of turrets are gone for GE. And that's so scary because this Baron is going to allow you to take out these turrets pretty darn easily. Yeah, and that's going to make a, a pretty sizable gold lead that much bigger. Wolf might go the side. There's a super ultimate. Great ultimate from Tom. Locking up Curl under that turret. He's going to go down. Wolf comes in, plays Gorilla back in. He gets out on the uh, anchor, though. Meanwhile, that mid turret will go down. Smeb, meanwhile, dying in the middle of all of that as well. Smeb went into that fight and was instantly <laughs> destroyed by SK Telecom. Oh, wow. He is not in a position to deal with his barren up composition. They try oh. and save their turrets because the snowball is absolutely crazy right now. Yeah. You go through this game, you take out the towers with your barren buff. It's basically, you've got the dragons, you've got the barren, now you're getting all the gold as well. And this is a pretty one-sided game. And Lee thought he was the one who was maxing snowball this game. Oops. 
Well, SKT. Ready to close this one out. 10,000 gold ahead. Marin still split pushing uh, down in bottom lane. Yeah, why not? There's yep. no one to answer that with Smeb dead right there. Let's take All a right. look at this again. So, Watch Todd Smeb. comes in. Great ultimate. It's two. Smeb is on the outside. Nope, nope. Gets locked up by Cassiopeia. And the damage coming in from Cassiopeia right now is crazy. You see, pretty easy to take down that Aurelia. She had the Merc Treads, but simply not enough MR to deal with the easy Hoon Cassiopeia, who has 300 CS at 28 minutes into this game, already Jeez. with three core items as well. Well, it's exactly like we said, you know, Smeb might have a hard time getting in onto this Cassiopeia, and he certainly did. Yeah, there's no sign of a, an Aegis of the Legion or a locket in sight for the GE Tigers either, so there's almost yep. nothing they can do against this Cassiopeia with the Abyssal. Just has the flat penetration right now, but that does enough against the items that GE Tigers have. Yeah. Uh, what a huge thing for Tom to be able to come in. Go 3 0 6 so far on the Shishwani in the kill finals. kill contribution. Yep, really, really played magnificently. Easy Yoon just doing his job, doing what he's done basically his entire career. Well, Tom had a good read on the situation. Just yep. farm up. You know, it's disappointing that Marin got first blooded in the top side, but as opposed to Lee, who wanted to do the ganks and play that same style that he used to play pre 5.5, but. It's just a lot harder to do that on a new one. Yeah, I mean, and since that first blood that Marin, you know, was the recipient of, he uh, managed to just knock down the turret slowly over time, stayed yep. safe, poked out Smeb. And I mean, again, you know, when that first blood happened to Marin, they saw the we saw the camera shot of him. He was kind of kind of laughing about it, a little bit disappointed. He's like, "Oh well, yeah, I deserve that," but not worried, and certainly didn't seem to have a seem to have a reason to be. Well, he fought back. He has the, the advantage in the matchup, and then he fought back oh, yeah. over time to get that global goal from the turret as well. So it all evened out in the end. Easy here. Dragging back up in 15. SKT in prime position to grab that one again as they've got mid lane pushed up. Marin uh, is mega now right now, so he's not going not gonna to have that. And will they just trade this dragon for a turret? Doesn't look like they want to. And they may go in here. Nope, he's spending that mid lane for now. They have super minions. Oh, here we go. They are coming in now. Smeb tries to get the back line. Nice defensive box here. Bang goes untouched. They managed to take down Easy Hoon, though. That's a lot of damage out of the way. GE still chasing. Smeb tries to come in on the bank. It's split up immediately. Oh, huge flash hard from Marin. Got Megan on back just in time. There's a double kill for Bang. And Bang has just had a field day. It's been a shooting gallery. All team fight for him. Well, he just has so much peel. Yeah. He's got an insane amount of crowd control to back him up right there. And GE had a very nice position in that team fight. They actually did very well, considering that they are 13K in the hole right now. Yeah, they blew up easy. They really did yep. the best they could. But Bang is just a force to be reckoned with right now. Yeah, the, the fact that they were actually able to kill Easy Hood in that fight is pretty darn impressive. Yeah. But even then, Marin held on to his ult, managed to find the right timing for it, hits three or four members of GE, and that gives Fang just every opportunity to get those ricochets in there. Because if we look at this right now, they go in and spam oh, immediately yep. on the Easy Hood. Easy Hood does pretty much nothing during this fight. He also got swapped there at the end by Prey, so right. Easy Hood just not able to get any of his abilities off. Great initiation from GE. So essentially, SKT just dominated a 4v5. Yeah, exactly. And I think GE, this shows their strengths right here. In the team fight, they really engage beautifully. They know what their targets are, yeah. they know what the priority is, but they just fall too far behind to be able to make it work. The laning phase continues to be a problem. Right, if this were an even game, that would have gone much different. Oh, it would have been insanely good for GE. Yeah, well, we'll see if they can maybe take this Baron, but again, with the deficit that they've got, now it's a 13,000 gold. It just doesn't seem like they can fight. If they can't win a team fight with the engage they just had, how in the world no, you're will not they gonna win get any team fights for the rest of the game? Probably not going to get another one like that. Yeah. Easy Hoon also a little bit questionable on the ignite pickup this game. Probably should have <laughs> gone for the more conservative cleanse. He's been hanging around Baker too much, I think. <laughs> Starting to rub off on him. <laughs> and they're going to sweep out that ward. Get some vision around Baron. And they don't want to go on to Tom here, it looks like. A little bit too dangerous. 
just a, just a matter of time, though. It's a matter of time, really. Baron yep. is live again, so you see all those wards going down, but Marin is able to happily split push with his teleport up, knocking that turret down ever so slowly with his boomerang. Doesn't seem to take too long. Which is surprising, because you would think that it would take a long time to knock down a building with a boomerang. Well, this is League of Legends. So teleport coming in now, and here we go. Nice engaged on SKT. Prey tries to get, well, Prey gets in the back line. This is not where you want to be, Prey. Meanwhile, oh, another big ult from Kuro. Pushes people back, but SKT on the chase right now. GG already on the defensive. There goes Smeb. He is dead yet again, and Kuro just trying to escape. A flash. There's a slow. Kuro, no turret to defend him. Another double kill for Bang. And that's going to be a dead inhibitor. And that may very well be SK Telecom taking game one of the Champions Spring Finals. They're going for the Nexus first. You think they can close it right here? Yeah. Working like they can. Uh, Tom's taking a lot Tom of damage. No! Oh, Tom, that's it, your bench. And there we go. The other Nexus turret going down four seconds. So Prey comes up two for Gorilla. And the Nexus under pressure. Can the bot lane save it? I don't think so. There goes the Nexus. And SK Telecom with Tom, with Easy Hoon, crushes GE in game one. Yeah, Easy Hoon had 16 out of 17 in terms of, I mean, Tom rather, had 16 out of 17 in terms of his kill contribution that game. Definitely a major player. But yep. I think a lot of this was, it was Lee's jungling style and then the champion selection of Irelia in top lane against this NAR. Remember that they they knew this was a possibility when that when that champion was picked. They well they they knew that matchup. They knew they were going to have it if they didn't lane swap, and that was the, the decision that they made. Really didn't work out for them. Yep. So what other tricks does GE have up their sleeve here for game number two? Again, a bit demoralizing, beaten by an SKT with. Not even their strongest roster in. Yeah, very we'll interesting. See. But th they can make some good adaptations here. They're, I'm not oh, concerned yeah. about their team fighting. I think GE has to pick for some really dominant lanes in this game, try and just survive that early game and, and let their strengths shine through at the cost of maybe some late game champion selections yeah. because you'll have at least a lead to play with at that point. That's right. Well, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back with game number two here at the finals right after this.